Please welcome to the program, Margo Kidder. Good to see you. How are you? Hi, good. Welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. I'm one of your hugest fans. Well, you're and very sweet to say that. For years and Thank years you. and years, yeah. You're very kind. So we're waiting for you to come to the States. Oh, well, well you're northern Montana. You're in Montana. But I'm in, in southern yeah, Montana. Yeah, but in northern Montana, you can watch CBC, yeah. right? Yeah. I like when, when good guests come on the show. I especially like it when they bring their dogs. Uh, you I bring do. your dogs <laughs> out here I do today. have my dogs, Pierre and Sally. There go, There's Pierre. A, just a little Pierre here. here. Uh, Pierre. Yeah. Pierre. You, you, obviously, you dated Pierre Trudeau, but why'd you name him Pierre after him? Well, I did name him after Pierre. Actually, yeah. when Pierre died, I was really, really sad, and I got this puppy. And it wasn't quite the same as snuggling the human Pierre, but right. pretty darn good. Um, I wanna, uh, uh, there's lots to talk with you, but I, I want to get on this you being arrested at the White House. Uh -huh. That's a, I love that. Yeah, I did too, actually. It was yeah. fun, yeah. Yeah, I mean, did you set out to get arrested that day? We did. There were there was a wonderful group, which I'm now a part of the leadership of, called 350.org, which is uh, a group trying to teach people about climate change and wake them up to the very, very real uh, dangers that we're facing right now. This is specific to the Keystone Pipeline, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, the Keystone Pipeline, as I'm sure you all know, is proposed to go from the tar sands in Alberta down to Houston, where the oil will be exploited. Uh, exported. And so there were a lot of people who were horrified by the potential catastrophes in such a pipeline. Uh, See, we know this, so we as people know this happens, yeah. but we elect, like the, the people, mm -hmm. the democracy elects a government that, that knows this, and they think that this is a reason, one of the reasons why our economy is stable. How do you mm -hmm. get the message out? Can you even get the message out in the end? Well, the first thing people have to start facing, contrary to the advertising fed to us by oil and gas companies is that environmentalism and economic stability go hand in hand on any long-term basis. How did you come to this, to be like this? I mean, I guess I came to politics because our family always argued over politics over dinner. I don't know about yours. Yeah, sure. I think you get that bug pretty early. Daddy was an American conservative and mommy was a NDP liberal sometimes, but NDP, uh, very Canadian, very Canadian woman. And it was the way dinner table conversation went. And then I wasn't, somebody asked me when I first got politically active, and I wasn't sure until I found in my file cabinet a letter from the 60s from the office of the prime minister, and it was Pierre, and it said, Dear Miss Kidder, the Prime Minister never minds criticism, no matter how graphically it's expressed. Did you show him that letter? No, when you but were I snuggling? mentioned it to him. <laughs> we had a good laugh. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard that Justin's announced his... In I'm just intent. thrilled. I think it's wonderful. I, think, I haven't known him since he was a kid, but I just adored him. He wanted to be an actor when he was a kid. Um, and he, too, you know, there's a guy. Most politicians are not what you'd call moral right off the bat. That wouldn't be the word that springs to mind. <laughs> Let's face it. Uh, and, and I don't think any of those kids could not be moral. A um, big part of your story has been the different parts of your career. There's the political part, the Superman was its own mm -hmm. thing. Um, you're... The mental health story was a part of it. How do you feel about that story now? It's old news. I flipped out almost 17 years ago now. Yeah. And still, I have people in the airports going, are you okay? Really? And it's sort of sweet and touching, but at the same time, you want to go, it was 17 years ago. <laughs> so um, I feel very lucky that I got the kind of help that I did through the, and it was sheer luck. It was, certainly wasn't any brilliance of mine where I got, People who uh, didn't insist I get drugged to the gills with a lot of mind-numbing things that basically turn you into a vegetable and who taught me how to get better naturally. And so I feel really, really, really blessed by that. Do you think we're having the right conversation about mental health? Like people in general, is, is the conversation about mental health issues today the right kind? No, because I don't think there's a difference between mental health and health health. Um, what's left out of the mental health conversation is the fact that your brain is an organ of your body and therefore if there's something sick in your body, the chances are there's something sick in your brain and that you heal the two of them at the same time. It's really nice to see you. Thanks so much for coming in today. Thanks. I'm so glad I finally met you. I really appreciate yeah. it. Margot Kidder, everybody.